to all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave para peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is Sean Whittington's Paranormal Ministry 2.0, live 2.0, and I'm your host, Sean Whittington. I'm a seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church. I'm coming to you live from my haunted house, my very haunted house where I live. It got a great show today, and you guys all know that. That's why you tuned in. Um, real quick, if there's anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. If you go there to visit, keep in mind that my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So I know it's I know times are tough, brothers and sisters, but if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so, please click on it and send my ministry in a small donation. I promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. And trust me, we'll put it to good use. Um, while you're there, um, there's a place where you can make an appointment to speak with me if you're having issues of a spiritual nature, not necessarily paranormal. Um, my books are there, God, Ghost, and the Paranormal Ministry and God, Ghost, and the Paranormal Ministry 2. If you buy the books off the website, they come to you autographed, enclosed in a beautiful house blessing kit. And my course is there, my online uh, course, Introduction to Spiritual Warfare, uh, which is an awesome course if you are a true warrior for Christ and want to learn how to draw your line in the sand, make a stand, circle the wagons, and put up a good fight, the fight of your life against God forbid true evil. If it ever comes calling, that's the course for you comes complete with a stunning diploma, certificate of completion, suited for framing, along with, and my graduates also get some very special blessed gifts that you can only get from yours truly. So you can enroll there uh, in the course at the website too. Okay, today is First Friday, and First Friday means a couple of things. It is Christian Supernatural, the monthly returning series, Christian Supernatural, with my very special co-host. So, without further ado, please give a big, warm, paranormal ministry family welcome to the one and only Ira Wolfnison. Howdy. <laughs> What's going on? Oh. Well, angels and aliens today. Very cool. Very, very cool. You know how we, how I roll here. Let me tell her. Let me let me click on the. You know, I just <laughs> how long have I been doing this show? And I never knew that I could click on this one button and see comments. All this time, I've been waiting for Zach <laughs> to put them up on the screen for me if he thought they were important enough. Or, yeah. um, but I've got private chat that I can send him a private message, like, um, you know, whatever. And then I've got this other one that I can click and I can see people, what they might say too, which, hey, you learn something new every day. That's why Zach's here, because I have no clue how to, to do all this stuff. Anyway, um, you look very pretty today. I'm so happy. I lo really look forward to First Friday. I always look forward to my second Monday of the month show with Dr. Joy. Oh, yes. Um, I've only got one mon uh, two Monday shows now a month because I'm trying to free myself up to do, you know, be more involved in my seminary studies. Uh, but I try to book every Friday, but uh, my first Friday show is always a big one for me. And I always get so many people reaching out afterwards that just love you. Oh, so, wow. um, and you know that I went through, I, I might as well address this real quick too. I'm still getting a lot of people and I, and I understand I'm, I, I, I think I had, 10 names short of a th of 5,000 on my original profile. So I can understand it takes a little time for people to figure out what happened, but I just disappeared off of Facebook and I don't know why. Um, I was actually one morning working on Facebook, talking to a friend, my um, profile froze up. So I logged off my computer, rebooted, came back in and I kept getting this, profile by the name of Zach uh, King, I think it is. So I reached out to this guy, never got a response, reached out to Facebook many times, never got a response. But my original 
main Facebook profile just disappeared, was deactivated. So I'm now, people can now find me on Lawrence Marais, Sean Patrick Whittington, which was a, also a profile I had for many years as a tribute to my parents. But now I'm exclusively there now if, if people are trying to hunt me down. Um, so yeah, and then I talked to lots of people. I can't believe how out of hand right now, maybe this is paranormal, supernatural, probably not. But I can't believe how many people have reached out to me that said the same thing happened to me. Mm-hmm. Got hacked or Facebook said I did something that made them mad and they deactivated me, but they never told me what that was. I don't know what's going on, but it's happening to a lot of people. And um, I understand the same thing happened to you, too. You're not so much on here Yeah, about, about five years ago, I put my head up into the light and started doing some conferences and speaking engagements and same thing happened to me. So I'm not on social media. <laughs> I, uh, I, I just get walked, that too. Well, I just I'll, walked away. <laughs> people, people ask me but, that too. How can I find her? I can't find her anywhere after a show. And yeah, yeah. I'll, uh-uh. I'll tell you, I don't know if you'll get to her, but here's her website. I don't even know if your website's up. No, anymore, no, but... it's just, it's just a contact information, but I don't really okay, respond. Cool. Oh, I, don't, all right. I don't really respond because um, I don't know the people. I don't know their circumstances. But um, I I think people will see a little more of me soon because I just finished my book. So it's oh, in primary cool. editing. Um, very, very cool. I don't want to come out that much. I don't really feel the desire that I used to have. But um, you can find me right here. Yeah. So first Friday yeah. of every month. Right yeah. here on the Paranormal Ministry, yeah. and uh, I'm grateful to have you. I, I love, uh, I love it when we get together once a month, and we also talk a little bit, you know, yeah. in in the month leading up to your next appearance. But um, well, you, yeah, I love you, it. you endured a spiritual attack, no doubt in my mind. Um, whenever you start working with God or have something important to say for humanity, even um, it usually comes for you. And when I say it. I mean, the devil, I call it it usually (laughs) because I'm sure you, I'm sure he enjoys that. That's what it is. (laughs) But, um, yeah. So, um, today, today, um, I think, I'm not sure if it was last time or the time before we spoke about the paranormal fascination and, and to our own detriment, you know, going down the many rabbit holes and what happens. But today I wanted to talk specifically about, um, the similarities between fallen angels and demons or fallen, I mean, excuse me, fallen angels and demons and extraterrestrial that the, the alien narrative. I am all over that, like a cheap suit. Yeah. But first I I have to do in order to um, state my case, I have to do a little recap of biblical history. So (laughs) just quickly, (laughs) You take your era. Yeah. You know me. I, you, uh, this is your show. Uh, so no, it's your show. You okay. talk as long as you want to talk about anything you want to talk about, and don't worry okay. about rushing. I've got okay. a couple of nice cold drinks here. I'm good to go. Okay, here we go. Get your popcorn. So okay. um, we're going to start the story of history when Eden fell, and Adam and Eve um, believed, you know, the lies of the devil, and we know that when they believe those lies, everything in creation in earthly creation or Eden, Edenic creation fell. Death entered the world uh, when we fell because the animals were under our authority, the animals fell. And when I say we, Adam and Eve fell and under their authority were all the animals, they fell. And they fell in vibration, so to speak, because Adam and Eve are described as having clothing of light, meaning their skins were made of light, meaning they were more energy than matter. So were the animals. Nobody ate meat. Biblically, in Genesis, it states, you know, the plants were there for the animals and the plants were there for Adam and Eve. And when when they fell and the animals fell, heaven was separated from earth. Uh, Lucifer then took the princeship of Eden, earth. Um, he, it was now his terrain, his um, within his dominion. 
And um, it was done legally based on spiritual laws. And so God then had to start his reversal process. So when everything fell, death entered the world, heaven was separated from earth, meaning heaven closed. So any human beings that were born of Adam and Eve all the way up to, you know, um, the time of Christ, um, heaven was closed. So everybody did not go to heaven upon their death, even the holiest patriarchs, etc. Nobody went to heaven. It was closed. So you can see the mess that was created in that moment. And then everybody started to multiply, go forth and multiply. Everybody's multiplying. And at that time, Satan commanded 200 fallen angels to come down and go into the daughters of men and have children with them. That act was intentional. And when that happened, Magica came down to us. There is a passage in the Bible that talks about pharmacaea, sorcery, metallurgy, which is alchemy. Um, all the divine arts and sciences were brought down at that time so we would be able to understand Magica. It was brought down in order to create the desire for power and control amongst all the people. It was brought down to create the idea that you can be your own God and control the forces and each other. And so it was an evil thing when the 200 fallen came down and they went into the daughters of men and had children with them. The Nephilim were created, their children, which were flesh and blood beings, yet they had the characteristics of their fallen fathers. Their fallen fathers are fixed in evil because they chose evil. One third of the angels fell in that first fall. And so these Nephilim were not created by God. They were created by Luciferian forces. Um, they didn't have souls. So when they died, they became spirits that wandered the land. Um, some say they went to Tartarus in the mythology, but basically a demon is a different species than a fallen angel. A fallen angel is created by God. Therefore, uh, the demons are different because they were created by fallen angels. So that's one way to create um, a being that has no soul, that is not of God, that is alive and physical and operating on the earth. And that's a data point for the conversation we're going to have about these extraterrestrial narratives in a moment. But we waited thousands of years as everybody multiplied and was wicked and Nephilim were on the earth. God sends a flood. He busts a move. He gets rid of them. He gets rid of the Nephilim on the earth. But it says in the Bible, they were there before the flood and they were there after the flood. <laughs> so what does that mean? <laughs> How could that be? If he destroyed them in the flood, we have to assume with logic and reason, that they did it again somehow in some fashion, whether it was unique from the way they did it when they went into the Daughters of Men, but they did it somehow where they were creating, by definition, Nephilim beings, which would be human bodies without souls that were not created of God. Another data point. So then God comes as man, as Christ, and he reverses many things when he suffers on the cross and does his work on the cross. He gets the kingdom back from Lucifer legally by doing this sacrificial act, uh, taking our sins upon ourselves. Heaven is now open. And you could say Christ has won the kingdom back, so to speak. Well, there's a battle that's still going on all around us. I call it the battle that's over, but not over yet. So like all battles, epic battles, there are battles that rage on afterwards until the enemy cannot battle anymore. As we know, the fallen angels and the demons are still among us. And we also have human diabolic people who I call the busy bees or our evil overlords that are also working with the demons and the fallen angels that are still among us. We're in an epic battle. It's a real battle and it's happening on all three planes of existence. It's happening in the spiritual where the angels are battling and it's happening here in the physical as we do battle. And so what is our purpose to under, in understanding spiritual warfare 
what is our purpose in being called to a battlefield when Christ won the war and got the kingdom back? Our purpose is because there are millions and millions of souls on the planet alive today, people that are blinded, that are confused, that have not been uh, properly given the opportunity to choose God. They haven't been given the guidance as, guidance as children. And they are people that are flailing, suffering, and we're going out onto the battlefield to save them and drag them off. And that's evangelism. But it's also um, to enlighten them by speaking like we're speaking now. So they might get curious and choose God and, and go, go to Christ. And then their souls are saved and they can go to heaven after their deaths. Now, when we look at the people who have not chosen God willfully and with their intellect, many of them are Luciferian, especially the high functioning Luciferians. They choose the devil because in Luciferianism, in high functioning Luciferianism, they believe that if they choose the devil now, they'll have great rewards, success, and material things in this life. They'll have power. They'll have uh, positions. And when they die, what they believe is they will have rulership and the same things in hell. They know that hell is finite. They know that their lives will be blotted out in the end of days, at the end times. But that's an eternity to a human mind. But they choose, they choose Satan because of what they get here and now. And then they believe that in hell, they'll have a position of rulership. Now, they're dealing with the father of lies and the Lord of death. So it doesn't make much sense to believe that you're going to have that position in hell. <laughs> it's not like you're dealing with someone who's telling you the truth. So with that said, the busy bees are working avidly alongside the fallen as well as the demons. And the demons are a different species than the fallen angels. They're very, uh, they're infantile, they're mischievous, they're disgusting and debauched. So when you see people possessed by these very, very reprehensible, you know, goofy theatrical um, beings, that's most likely a demon who's looking for a body, who really wants to find another vehicle to have the carnal pleasures and the and the, you know, to live life again. Fallen angels can also possess bodies as well. So now we're to the point where uh, we're in, in modern day and we're looking at the narratives that the fallen, the demonic, as well as the busy bees, our evil overlords are promoting right now. And it all comes down to, interestingly enough, depopulation, <laughs> really. You know, be gay, be trans, um, all the GMO foods that we're being attacked with, uh, the climate narrative, there's too many people, uh, family structure is not okay, uh, you know, Christian family structure is not okay. Everything is pointing towards don't have children, <laughs> don't have any more people. Well, God has a finite number in his plan of people that have to incarnate. And the devil knows that. And so he's going to knock off as many as he can and take as many as he can. So our job as spiritual warriors is to put on the full armor of God and stand and go to the battlefield and drag as many people as we can off by talking, by praying for them, by just being Catholics or Christians, setting examples. So as we come into the narrative, which is the most recent one, which is extraterrestrials are among us. We don't know what they are, but uh, they're a national security threat. And we have bodies, we, we have craft, and, um, but we can't explain them. So when you look at um, the government's announcements, the government talks about um, well, uh, we, we used to call them UFOs, but now we call them UAPs. So UFO is unidentified flying object, and it's changed to unidentified aerial phenomena. So that's interesting to me as a data point, because phenomena, if you look at the definition of phenomena, it is from Oxford language, a fact or situation that is that is observed to exist or happen, especially one whose cause or explanation 
is in question. So basically, they change the definition because they don't know what they're dealing with. But they have craft and they have bodies, they say, <laughs> which doesn't add up to much logic and reason either. So they also changed the name from extraterrestrial to non-human entity, <laughs> which, which, which reminds me of, well, what's a Nephilim? <laughs> you know, a non-human entity. So as I listen to the narrative talking about it's a national security threat and we need lots of money, we need this giant space force, and we have technology that we're reverse engineering, it all points to one thing for me. It sounds like the busy bees need money, um, more money for whatever they're working on, another black ops project where trillions go nowhere. But it's also a method of power and control over all the other nation states in the world and a power and control over all of us. So if we're all afraid, like we were all afraid during the pandemic days, um, it's easier to control us and say, well, we have this national security threat and everybody has to check in and report things and yada, 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 yada. So it's the three, the three factions, again, working together. And I think that um, when it comes to craft, you know, you and I were talking before the show about all the Renaissance paintings where they depict the craft in these very, very old paintings. And these things look exactly like UFO craft. Then we look at petroglyphs. We see the same thing. We look at rock art. Um, we look at the mythology talking about it. We look at Vimanas um, in India. Everybody, everybody has seen these things for thousands of years. It's not that we don't know what they are. We know exactly what they are. They're the same things that they've always been. And they do manifest physical craft because they have physical bodies when they're here. Now, this gets us back to how do they create physical bodies? Well, in the mythology and the different mythologies, you'll see that they have, you know, unique and varied ways of creating physical bodies for themselves. These are non-corporeal beings, angels, fallen angels, demons as well. They're non-corporeal beings. And then we have to remember that if they're going to come down face to face and communicate with us, they have to have a body. Otherwise, like you were talking about, they come in dreams and they come in dream like visuals or uh, visualizations. So these beings, how do they create these bodies? Well, when the fallen came down on Mount Hermon, they brought alchemy. Alchemy is a very interesting science. It was once the science of the day for Isaac Newton and or even back as far as Paracelsus. I mean, alchemy is an ancient art that was brought down, an ancient science, excuse me, that was brought down. And the difference between Alchemy and chemistry, which is really what alchemy is infamous for, is it, it performs chemistry, is the use of consciousness. And there are stories of alchemists who created a being called the humunculus. It was a small human that was soulless. So think of a zombie or, or something like that. So they actually created flesh and blood, allegedly, um, creations. We hear about chimeras. In our modern day science, we're kind of doing that now. We've already created a human body, but we cannot animate it and it doesn't appear to have a consciousness, which is chilling. So these beings, if you look at idolatry, the Bible doesn't really tell us what an idol is. It just says, don't worship idols. But it doesn't really tell us. We know some were of stone, some were of wood, and some was, one was a golden calf. But alchemy, a very ancient science, can allegedly create flesh, fleshly bodies. So now the demons are infamous at possession. Uh, the fallen angels are infamous at possession. They're skilled at it. They can take their consciousness and project it into an object. We've heard of haunted dolls. We've heard of all these different things. Oddly enough, during uh, just recently... I just caught something random on the news where uh, a video was released. I had seen it many, many years ago. And allegedly it was from a government um, archived top secret video of an alien. And the alien in this video is sick. It has medics around it. There are high ranking um, officers, 
in the background. Um, allegedly, it's absolutely true, but to me, it looks absolutely like a puppet of a little gray. It moves strangely, but it is the big black eyes, the elongated skull, the skinny little neck, etc. And this is really funny for me because in my past, most people here know that I was that I'm an ex occultist and. Uh, I studied with two mystery schools. I was invoking, convoking, evoking, everything you could imagine. <laughs> so I, I have seen demons and the way they appear, whether it's in an esoteric fashion or, you know, in a vision or in a dream, they look exactly like aliens. That's what they look like. They're fetal. They have those black, shining, hypnotic eyes that are like, bottomless. They're telepathic. They're unhealthy looking. They have skin either the color of alabaster or bone. And when I started hearing about abduction experiences, I thought, you know, as a younger person, I thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe I'm seeing aliens. But these, these things come in ways that are so ludicrous that it can only be demonic because the demonic and the diabolic is ludicrous. It's disordered. It um, doesn't ever make sense. It's nonsensical. So, all right. So back to the craft. If you have a body, you need a craft. Again, demons can take, like with alchemy, all they need is just the seed of something. And through consciousness and chemistry or biology, they can create a craft. Now, we're not just dealing with other human beings. We're dealing with creatures that are so intelligent, so supernaturally powerful. Satan himself was second only to God in intelligence. Now, I'm not saying his intelligence was this close to God. It was probably like this far from God. But compared to us, we are dealing with something whose intelligence is off the charts. We can't even imagine the realm of intelligence that he exists in. So the narratives, the, the warfare on three levels, physical, spiritual, and intellectual, we're seeing this happening. It's like we're playing chess with something on three planes of existence all the time. That's why. So could, could a fallen angel come, come down here in consciousness, non-corporeally, and then create a body for himself, which then needs a craft to transport that body? Absolutely. If the mythology is correct, as a Catholic, as a Christian, I believe the mythology is correct. Or even scripturally, if you connect the dots. Um, yeah. And there are there are different entities. When we look at Psalm 82 and we all wonder who these other Elohim are that God's just bashing. He's excoriating them. And those were the 70 that were assigned to the nations when God took Israel for himself, right? And those those beings, those Elohim, sons of God, they were a punishment. They were fallen. So I can't say what happens in the social circles of heaven, but I do, but I do study deeply demonology and angel, angelology. And I get to this cumulative, cumulative point where as a philosopher, I'm looking at it going, okay, well, if it's not this, then it's this. So today's alien narrative you know, either the government is lying about having bodies and craft or there is an explanation for the bodies and craft. And it's not anything in uh, the natural realm. It's not anything that that the government could explain how, how that craft was created. Now, why would they give us craft that, you know, why would they just leave a crashed craft? If you're an advanced extraterrestrial from planet 20 trillion miles away and your craft crashed and you somehow made it across time and space without, you know, smashing against the wall or your craft blowing up or hitting asteroids. And, and not only that, you su survived a journey that could take zillions of, of years. Would you, wouldn't you have the capability to retrieve that craft and just make it disappear like you do your other craft? Yeah. So why would a crash craft be left here if they're indeed fallen angels? Well, we go back again to the second fall on Mount Hermon when they went into the daughters of the men, daughters of men, and they brought us Magica, which was for power and control, completely drove the world into wickedness. 
over this power and control with all this magica, all this power. These were primitive people. They were given tools to do warfare. They were given metallurgy. They were taught how to make swords and shields and, and things like that. Well, here we are in the modern world. If somebody comes and teaches us that stuff. We're going to laugh. But you leave us an alien craft that's equal to their sword and shield back then. You leave us something that we can think is from another planet and we can reverse engineer it. What are we going to do with it? We're going to go with power and control. We're going to go with monetizing it. And then we're probably going to destroy ourselves with that technology. And that's why we're left craft. Either, either our government knows that these crashed craft are from the fallen or they don't. But either way, they're going to have the same trajectory outcome of eventually it not being in our best interest. So we have an explanation for the bodies, idols. We have an explanation for the craft. But most of these beings have other similarities with the supernatural. So the things that... Um, let me just check my notes and see if I missed a point here. So most of the people that are contacted by these extraterrestrials are given messages for humanity. They used to be um, nuclear is bad. And then it was about the earth. Don't destroy the earth. And the people were told they're special. Both of these things have not been good things for us, really, you know. It's like we're looking at the whole climate change narrative, which really morphed into something destructive. And we look at the old nuclear narrative where we had nuclear, nuclear power, and that's kind of morphing into something that's not very good because we're all going to use windmills and pollute the earth instead. Yeah. So, so the similarities, the supernatural similarities, uh, the data points that I have noticed is... Um, the orb phenomena. So all of these reports between both angels, fallen angels, and aliens, there are a lot of orbs that show up within these um, things. And we know that orbs can just be a particle or a water droplet or whatever, but these orbs seem to be excited groups of electrons cloaking, you know, cloaking together and then self-fluorescing. They also seem to be conscious so we'll see little orbs following craft and different things. These orbs show up with Bigfoot encounters, with ghost encounters, uh, with fairies, elves, etc. All everything but the kitchen sink. Now we know that the diabolic they present as anything but the kitchen sink. You know, we call them friendlies, but they're not really friendlies. They present as friendlies. Another thing that's observed is levitation. So we have stories of saints that levitate and we have stories of people possessed that levitate. And then we have the alien narrative where people are levitated out of their bed and up into a craft. So we know that God can levitate people and we know that evil can levitate people. And then here's the extraterrestrial narrative showing up and people are levitating. Both angels and aliens are all precognitive. So the strange thing about this is um, with the extraterrestrial narrative, they can find you even when you change res residences. They also know what you're going to do, where you're going to be, what you're thinking, <laughs> right? So we also know that um, through the mythology that all creation, all creatures in creation are telepathic. It, it's the way everything would communicate. We know our dogs are telepathic. Um, animals throw pictures in your mind. People always talk about, suddenly I saw my dog drinking water and I realized his water bowl was empty. Or um, there is that communication between mother and children, te telepathy. And so these beings are also telepathic and as well as the diabolic is telepathic. It also is precognitive. It also watches you so closely that it knows what you're doing. It can watch you for days, months, years. It can also be your friend for days, months, years, and then not. Um, 
Many aliens appear as little grays and tall grays. They're reported with the long skulls, the big gray eyes. Um, and most of us that have had experiences with actual fallen angels and demons visually or in meditation, um, we know that that's how they present. That, that's what they look like. Also, the succubus incubus mythology um, describes the same beings, the same creatures. And of course, with alien abduction, um, there is always an intense examination and experimentation or sample taking of your most personal and private reproductive areas. Um, you could call it a rape. Uh, you know, to say that extraterrestrials are good, like a lot of people do, they say, oh no, they're here to save mankind. Man, anything that violates your free will to that point is not good. <laughs> it's violating your free will. And it's pretty awful. So, uh, in it also that we notice whenever um, there are rarely females involved in alien abduction, uh, meaning if other beings of a human nature show up with them, rarely they're female. You just don't see many females. So fallen angels are all male, and according to our mythology or our doctrine, even I, I don't know if it would be do considered doctrine, but our um, history, our research as Catholics, <laughs> they're all male. So that's an interesting data point. Um, I'm not, I, I and, and they're usually Nordic in appearance. It's a data point. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> but that's the data point. <laughs> Uh, I've also heard that, um, in, I've also read in my research that, uh, well, we know this, they can manipulate matter and when presenting to us appear to bleed in and out of reality. That doesn't sound like technology to me. That sounds like supernatural activity. They can, they can manipulate the environment too, I've noticed. Yeah. And they can materialize and dematerialize objects. Um, they're not fully physical at times. And then sometimes they are. I think they can present as non-corporeal beings in a spiritual form. And then they can also command or be invoked into bodies. I mean, in shamanism, we, in, we used to invoke, you know, spiritual beings into objects. <laughs> You know, people invoke them into their drums or in the occult. Um, that's that's a common thing where you invoke something into an object and that object then becomes powerful because that being has been imbued into that object. That's, that's nothing new. That's idolatry. I mean, why would God say, no, no, you can't have any idols. Get away from the I idols. If it's just a rock or a stone, why would, why would that be an issue? <laughs> You know, there's there's a warning that goes with it. Yeah. So, okay, Linda Judd. So, um, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Malachi Martin, but Malachi Martin, excuse me. Um, he did a really old show on Art Bell years ago where he spoke with a really famous remote viewer. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to cause any trouble. But um, they did a show where... Um, Malachi Martin was a Catholic priest. He was very close to the Pope, actually. And they were talking about remote viewing. And Malachi said, you know, you're dealing with something that can be very dangerous. And this very famous remote viewer, who was one of the first government remote viewers that actually founded the program, said, yeah, we know. We know. We've had experiences. <laughs> so... There it is again. The government's aware of, you know, that there is a spiritual realm. There was also the rumor of the Collins elite. Um, there's no evidence for this. It's just the hearsay based on two people. But the Collins elite was a government program where a group of individuals were tasked with finding out what are these beings and craft that are coming into our physical realm. And their conclusion in the end, based on all of the the spiritual attacks that they came under, they had the hitchhiker syndromes, they had all kinds of things happening to them personally, to their families, in their homes. They concluded that these were not physical extraterrestrials. They concluded from a Christian mindset that these were evil, evil diabolical beings, that these were things of the demonic. 
So there it was, the government heard that again. You know, I can't say that there's evidence for this story, but but it's out there and it's been out there for years and years and years. Let me ask you something real quick here. I hate to interrupt you, but I'm I'm thinking about, um, you know, I keep thinking about the incubus, succubus thing. And um, on some weird level, I mean, you have, and I'm also thinking of, of, deity worship in terms of like um like uh, some of the hindus and the buddhists that they do like uh certain types of yoga and they invite in spirits uh to you know come into them and give them messages and show them things and then uh, you know I, i've known some pretty gifted um, um mediums that invite in spirit uh to actually take them over and then deliver messages and stuff. I worry about all that stuff. I don't like to judge and I don't like to get on anybody for, you know, whatever their belief system is and, and all that. But I worry about that. And um, the ink, I get a lot of incubus, succubus type cases. And yeah. I wonder if on some level, why would, in your yeah. humble opinion, why, why do you think, like, you know, you have some women that marry a ghost because they say, well, this disembodied human spirit came to me, made love to me, I fell in love, and now I'm I'm going to marry this ghost. But then you have these other people that have these violent sexual encounters, um, usually at night, kind of seem to be a dream, but then they turn out to be way more than a dream. Yeah. But is there some type of transference of, of, of a seed in the in the spiritual realm is there some type of transference of seed here that would well, make look, this type let's, of let's let's go back to alchemy and the creation of a puppet body right let's go back to alchemy so all you need is the seed so if you're a spiritual being coming in looking for that seed source it would either come from a human or it would be a cattle mutilation or an animal mutilation you need that little piece in order to create the humunculus or the puppet flesh body, according to alchemy. As for people marrying ghosts and things, I mean, let's be honest, mental illness is a thing too. And we can't just say that everything is of the diabolic. Mental illness exists. Maybe there's a spiritual catalyst for it. I'm not saying there isn't. But there is regular mental illness, brain injury, chemical imbalance. You know, the catalyst might have been diabolic. But it, it manifests as just regular old um, grassroots mental illness. That is a thing. Um, when people experience the succubus incubus, it could be a way of sourcing that seed material to create a fleshly icon, a, a fleshly body that they can then possess. I mean, you see it in, in the modern day paranormal with possessed dolls and you see it like I said, in shamanism with possessed objects, only they're intentionally um, imbued with spirits. So what was an icon? Don't worship the icons. Stay away from the icons, whether it was stone, wood, gold, or flesh. I, I'm hypothesizing. You know, I've just put a lot of data points together, either scripturally or yeah, I go to the Nag Hammadi and I go to the Sumerian texts and I go to a lot of different places. But, but when you put it together, it kind of, you know, it it just makes more sense to me. I just go back to the very simple truth that nothing is going to fly from 10 trillion stars away to here and survive that. These things have always been here. We've been hearing about them for thousands of years. They've always been here. And they're described in the very same ways by all people. The petroglyphs in Russia look just like the petroglyphs in South America, look just like the petroglyphs in Oregon. <laughs> it's like, okay, everybody saw them. I, uh, I did briefly mention that uh, one interview I did uh, in the before we went live, I talked to you about that abductee, mm -hmm. uh, where he said the first thing that the aliens said to them when they came to him was, "Have you seen God?" And then I think of that, and also think about now. I, you know, I'm not there. I'm not. 
think he did. At the Vatican, so I don't know. But rumor has it they have courses now for these new priests teaching them how to be ready to handle first contact. And if that's true, I don't know what what actual first contact uh, are they talking about. Uh, yeah, well, because you'll hear you you hear some of them say, "Well, we know that there's other life than human, and they're but they're all created by God." So I, you know, it's, it's, not. it can get a little overwhelming and confusing. But you're dealing with human beings. The Vatican—they're not all supernatural, angelic, you know, beings. They're they're just human guys, and they listen to the government. I, I, you know, for for the government to come out and say on a big congressional newscast, we have ships and we have bodies. <laughs> and how do you know that? Because that's what I was told by my source. The expert, that's what I was told by my source. I don't care if they produce pictures of them. I mean, what have we been lied to with already? All right. So let me tell you one more story. So back in World War II, Werner von Braun, a German SS officer who is known as the father of rocketry. You know, at that point in Germany, he was doing the work with the bell, you know, the anti-gravity ships. We had the women with the very long hair called the Vril. And the Vril were in communication allegedly with these extraterrestrial spiritual beings for all the technology that Germany confis that Germany nurtured. Well, at the end of World War II, Werner von Braun, who had been privy to very high level meetings in the Third Reich with Hitler, who was really into the occult and very much into high technology, he was brought here to America to work with NASA. <laughs> So everybody else either went to Nuremberg trial or escaped to Argentina, but there were some that were brought here and they went into the black op government programs in MK Ultra, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you can look at this up online yourself. This is no secret. And um, he was privy to very high uh, meetings here in the United States as well. And he told his assistant, Carol Rosen, at the end of his life, he said, you know, for power and control, the busy bees are evil overlords for power and control. They're going to try to get us to create space-based weapons. This is the father of rocketry, an amazing physicist. They're going to try to get us to create space-based weapons because then we'll just destroy the whole planet. But he said the first, the first lie they're going to tell us is that it's the terrorists. The next lie they're going to tell us is that it's the Russians. The next lie they're going to tell us it's third world crazy countries. And the next lie they tell us is it's going to be an asteroid. Well, we've heard the asteroid one. That was 2012 and all, all of those years. We've heard the terrorist ones. We've heard the Russians. And we've heard the weird, crazy country one. And he said the last one that they're going, the last one that they're going to tell us that we need to build these space based weapons for is because of aliens. And I, when I heard that, I used to think, that's yeah, they would never they would never do that. That's so crazy. No one would believe it. People really want to believe they're filling their spiritual holes um, with stuff like that. It's become a cult of idols. But he said, and the last card they're going to play, Carol, is the alien card. And it's all going to be a lie. The last card they're going to play, Carol, is the alien card. And it's all a lie. Let me let me ask you another quick question here. Uh, just recently, I saw an interview with um, Dwight Eisenhower's daughter, not Eleanor, but Dwight, the one that was the general mm -hmm. uh, and was president. Mm -hmm. And she tells this story that she says comes right from his diary mm -hmm. that she's only privy to. And she talks about uh, a story that he wrote about he was visiting the West while he was president, he was visiting the West coast and he went to some big political convention where he spoke in Palm Springs, I believe it was, but then you know how you always, everybody always knows where the president's at. He can't go anywhere without his schedule is so tight. Mm -hmm. He's here, then he's here, then he's here, then he's here, then he's going to be there and everybody knows where he's at, but he disappeared 
mm-hmm. for yeah, hours. I, I know this story. What do you think about that story? And he and in his book, well, she claims in his book, and that he also told her that he had this meeting. Yeah, I absolutely. I think he did. But again, what is he meeting with? Is he meeting with beings that came all the way across the known universe at the speed of light or faster at the speed of thought and survived it in physical bodies that could actually sit down and meet with him? And if these are creatures that had to create physical bodies once they got here, meaning they came and thought, then they had to create craft and physical bodies. What are we dealing with? Are we really dealing with things from other planets or are we dealing with something that's been here all along? What are we dealing with? Yeah, I'd tell everybody I was an alien too if I was a fallen angel. I just say, oh no, I'm from the Pleiades. I'm one of those Nordic whatevers. And here's some technology. And they would accept it like, okay, let's reverse engineer this. But you know, if I said, I'm a fallen angel, here's some technology, they'd be like, Mm, I don't know. It might be dangerous. I'm going to, in in my own defense, I'm going to say not knowing, not completely knowing the name of this next saint is because I'm 63 years old and have terrible short-term memory. (laughs) But I was just reading a story and there's a famous painting of this Mm -hmm. saint and what is depicted as uh, Satan standing in front of them and they're talking and they're holding something together and it's a famous painting and story about a saint that tricked the devil into building a church for him. And I can't. Oh, are you talking about Solomon who used the demons and Solomonic magic to no, build? I think the, it was. Solomon's I think temple? It, no, I think it was. You know, I'm not going to say that it's not that because, like I said, I can't remember the name of the saint. <laughs> and I yeah. was just looking at the painting and I was reading the story and hear this. This <laughs> being that yeah. their that the painter had made is supposed yeah. to be Satan. Many, oh. I was reading, were many uh, people like you get twenty oh. guys in a room, twenty oh. theologians and twenty ufologists, and the ufology guys will say no, that's an alien, and of course the theologians, uh, theologians say no, that's that's Satan. But you're right. What are we dealing with here? Yeah, you know. Um... I spent a lot of time in a couple of different Rosicrucian orders. And um, one of the most famous researchers, a scientist, I think he's a PhD in, I don't know, um, Jacques Vallée. He he wrote the books, um, Magonia. uh, I mean, he wrote all these books that really tied in the paranormal lexicon of fairies, elves, this, that. And, And they all match the, what we're dealing with now. And I think his, hypothesis was one man's fairy is another man's alien or something, you know, like that. Because he, what he saw was it's everything but the kitchen sink, what's happening in the paranormal. You know, it just, it's to us as, as, as an ex-occultist, it's called the mysteries and the mysteries don't want to be fully known. They can't be fully known. That's why they're called the mysteries. (laughs) So that's all the supernatural stuff. But he, he talked about, you know, things in a language that as a Rosicrucian and ex-occultist, I recognized. He talked about um, one of his books, I think, is called The Invisible College. And that is the spiritual court, which um, holds all of the wisdom stream from a very ancient lineage in Rosicrucianism. So, you know, these guys knew magic. So, For me, with Rosicrucianism, it was all about ceremonial magic, you know, the Golden Dawn system. And this was something that he, I could tell by the types of terms and words he was using, he had a knowledge of that. So he was a magician at some point, or at least a scholar of it. And here's a guy working for the government, doing research on UFOs and UAPs, and he's still doing it. He's very famous, and he's very well-respected. The government knows what these things are (laughs) but they can't really define them because you can't define the mysteries you can't define angels and demons they 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 exist outside of time and space they can come into time and space but they're from the avium they're outside of that like god is outside of time and space he created time and space i'm gonna risk I'm going to risk my show later being taken down off of here and taken down off of YouTube for what I'm about to say, but I got to say it. 
uh, you talk about how we don't want to, uh, you know, they, they, they want to get away from more of us being produced. <laughs> so where does this whole pan, where does this whole pandemic thing fit into and in the and all the gain of function research with these diseases that are just going to wipe us out? All I mean, I it, I think it is all somehow uh, communicating. All of it is communicating with each other somehow on some level. No, high functioning <clears throat> Luciferians are invoking allowing possession they're they're work shipping with evil so they're under the influence of evil they're being guided by evil evil speaking through their own mouths i mean you can see it i i can see it on them when somebody's under the influence of evil or they've got a lot of demonic stuff stuck to them i can see it i can feel it my dogs can too they automatically will rip somebody a new one on the street <laughs> that turns out to be somebody talking to stuff in the air of course they're under you know demonic influence but there are world leaders they're the first to to be targeted and yeah. even if it's not by consent if you know like some of our holy people if they're not in a state of grace or you know they get a little masonic for a while or a little gnostic for a while you know the door is open there are doorways to allowing evil into your life. You know, I mean, we're given spiritual warfare tools to go out on the battlefield and protect ourselves, but we're also given these tools to protect ourselves in our own homes, in our own lives, in our own relationships. And also who you hang around with, you know, it's a bit con contagious evil, you know, it can, it can jump on if you're not in, you know, walking in the light of Christ. Are you and, gonna and make? Are you gonna make a note where we're gonna pick up next time? <laughs> because I think there's I so know. much more that we need to discuss about this. You know, I didn't study for this. It was really funny last night. I thought it was a spiritual attack last night because before I come on your show, I pray the Exilium Christianorum. I pray the entire Rosary. I ask the Holy Spirit to come in and give me a hand because I don't know what the heck I'm doing, and I really prep. Well, last night I got like nobody ever texts me. I'm not on social media. I don't get emails. I, I live this very quiet life. Suddenly I had a million texts, a million things were happening. I had to go help somebody with their cats or something else happened. It was just boom, 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 boom. The time that I had set aside to study. I always prep for anything I do. I always make sure I study, research, get my information. Well, I couldn't do it last night. And so today I thought, wow, it was a spiritual attack. But it actually wasn't because I ended up speaking about or in a way that I completely was not going to do had I studied. And I, I think that God guides us through it. Oh, yeah. And so next time when you say we're going to pick up here, we're not doing the pickup. It's, it's up to the Lord, you know, okay. he'll, he'll guide us to, to wherever he wants us to go. I mean, that's what we are. We're servants. You know, we've offered ourselves to the Lord. When, when am I going to see you again? Let me see. I don't there, know. There's, uh... First of the month. <laughs> Uh, the 1st of September, Friday, September 1st. <laughs> okay. I love you. I respect I love you, you. I want you to have a wonderful, wonderful remainder of your Friday evening and your weekend. Give your dogs all a big, big slobber, <laughs> slobbery kiss from me. And yep. um, I will see you next month. Yeah. And God bless you, your family and your audience. And God bless Jennifer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and, All right, Era. And Zach. Thanks, Zach. All, All right, right. Talk I'll to see you, you soon. Bye. 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 I'll see you later. Uh wow. My my mind gets blown easy. <laughs> your your mind is blown. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what do I want to tell you guys? Ugh. I will be here next Friday, the 11th. Wendy Hollins of Lincolnshire Spirit Seekers. We're going to go to the UK and speak to Wendy Hollins next Friday, the 11th. Okay. Um, Friday, November 3rd. Well, actually, I'm flying into Louisville, Kentucky, Thursday, November 2nd, and then Friday, then driving to um, English, Indiana, 
where um, we will be at the Sycamore Springs Chapel. All of the USOCC will be there. I'm getting ordained into the diaconate that day, along with two other uh, seminarians. And one of the current deacons is going to get ordained into the priesthood. So it's going to be a big, huge ceremony, a, a mass and and festivities. And it's just going to be a really, really cool time. So if you are near Louisville, Kentucky or uh, English, Indiana, and you want it's open to the public, we're inviting everybody. You want to come and hang out with everybody at the USOCC and watch uh, yours truly get ordained into the diaconate, uh, you're more than welcome to come. That would be uh, Friday, November 3rd, and then Saturday, November 4th, we're at the same chapel for uh, Reverend Mother Elizabeth Winters is getting married. She's a priest in the USOCC, so that's going to be very cool. So I'll be flying in the 2nd, flying back on the 5th, but the two big days are Friday, November 3rd, and Saturday, November 4th. A big, huge USOCC event. If you want to take part in that, you can find out more about the church I belong to at usocc.org or bishopjameslong.com. Uh, the links to night prayer are there, which is every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. The links to Bible study are also there, and Bible study is every Wednesday and Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Pacific. Okay. Thank you to Zach and Adrian Clayton, my co-producers. Zach's got a really cool website, communitypayitforward.us. Go check it out. Thank you to Things Network. Thank you to Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Thank you to Skeleton Key Network. Thank you to PACT, Little P, capital A-C-T, podcasting for all coming together channel for all of these networks simulcasting my show god bless you for doing that and everybody still wants to get people reaching out to me all the time how can i watch uh i missed eli roth presents the legion of exorcists how can i see it well you can't anymore on tv season one is over <laughs> no i'm just kidding you can still it's streaming on discovery plus and max and you can buy the whole season for like ten dollars on uh, at Amazon Prime Video. So there you go. All right, guys. I know if I don't do this, I get people saying, "What happened to the joke?" So I'm going to leave you with another joke. A joke that one of you sent in. I'm going to pull out of this haunted carnival barker hat. My poor attempt to make everybody smile and laugh a little bit before I say good night. <laughs> What does corn say when it gets a compliment? Aw, oh, shucks. Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all. Peace. <laughs>